as someone whose background includes many years as a child care educator, I've always been big on encouraging children to use their imagination and explore their world through play. Perhaps with our modern tendency towards busyness, I've observed a tendency for parents to overcomplicate play. If you've listened to some of my other episodes, you'll know that I'm a fan of simplicity and being in touch with nature. And this is no different when it comes to play. I am thrilled in this episode to be talking with Sarah Belisso, who is a therapeutic play practitioner. Sarah and I have similar attitudes to play for children, and you'll hear some great insights in this episode on areas including pretend play and how to use it to build the parent-child relationship and simplify the idea of what it means to play. Play is an incredibly important part of your child's life, and you'll hear why in this episode. I'm infant massage instructor Helen Thompson. Hello and welcome to First Time Mums Chat. Being a parent for the first time is challenging and changes your life in every way imaginable. To help ease your transition into parenthood, I aim to offer supportive, holistic approaches and insights for mums of babies aged four weeks to 10 months old. My goal is to assist you to become the most confident, parent you can and smooth out the bumps along the way. This podcast is brought to you by My Baby Massage, so let's do this together. This podcast is for informational purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. Please contact a medical practitioner if you are concerned or have any medical issues. Welcome Sarah. I'm very happy to have you here on First Time Mums Chat and I look forward to speaking with you about therapeutic play. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Helen. So my name is Sarah. I'm the founder of Secure Foundations. I help parents with children aged 0 to 5 to really connect with their young children through attachment-focused play and also through some more kind of positive parenting practices, helping parents to understand where their children are developmentally and trying to help parents to do less and be more present in the moment and trying to simplify the idea of play. I'm also a clinical master's student, so I'm almost finished now with my master's of play therapy. Congratulations. Yeah, so I'm nearly finished with that and really look forward to bringing more of a therapeutic lens to the work that I do with parents and children. Wow, you've got a lot of experience there. So I come from a childcare background, so I have quite a wide knowledge of play, but I always believe that play is so important for children because as you say it's it's the way they learn, it's the way they Mm -hmm. develop and I think a lot of kids go to school far too early when they're not actually ready to go to school. They need more play environment before they actually go to school. So, I mean, play really is the child's work. Mm. The research in neuroscience suggests that there's nothing that lights up the brain quite like play. And I think we're doing a little bit of circle work in terms of coming back to the the importance of understanding play. But I still think that we've overcomplicated it in the process. And I think Mm, there's lots of beautiful social media accounts that really do a lot of work in championing play. But I think for people that don't quite understand it, now almost feel like they have to have this beautiful playroom with wooden Mm. toys set up and they've got to have all of these beautiful play invitations and and I think it's just overcomplicated it to the fact mm. and very simply for young children to be able to play at home, what they really need is just the freedom to actually be bored and to explore. Mm. Um, that's a good point. And through play, that's when children really get those opportunities to develop those social emotional skills. They get the chance to be bored. They can explore frustration. They can explore mm. the idea of cause and effect of consent even through rough and tumble play problem solving skills there's just so many amazing skills and I think parents get kind of put off by this idea of play because a it's either far too complicated Mm -hmm. or b they feel like they have to do the playing 
And actually, when the parent takes lead of the play, the child's no longer playing. At the very basis of play, a child has to be having fun. Like they have to be experiencing joy. So... Yeah, and that can come in a lot of different ways. It can come as a child going out and just picking flowers or smelling flowers or just sort of looking at a puddle and sticking a stick in it and experimenting and making yeah. sandcastles. There's um, an amazing program by a researcher called Karen Stagnity who does a lot of work around pretend play and she runs a, mm. a learn to play program. And you're just talking about that then, you know, the sticks in the puddle and they're on a pirate ship out in the middle of the ocean with this small puddle on the ground and the power of pretend play. And I know I certainly didn't have a lot of real deep understanding around pretend play until I started researching it and studying it. Pretend play is the highest order of play. In order to be able to actually pretend in play, you have to be able to plan, you have to be able to think about an outcome, you have to be able to imagine things outside of the reality. So through pretend play, children are actually able to transcend reality into something that they've never experienced. Mm. And I think, I just think that's incredible. I agree with you because I learned about pretend play when I was I'm doing my childcare diploma. But it it was just more about in a home corner, doing pretend play in a home corner and stuff. It wasn't, as I use the word, exploratory, as you've just explained. And it's using their imagination as well. It's developing all those skills to learn how to use the brain and how to develop their brain. Yep. And also they said this idea of actually exploring social emotional concepts mm, as well. Mm. Being able to explore feelings, being able to explore the point of view of somebody else and the thoughts of somebody else Mm. through play. And imagining those people, even if they don't exist, it's using the imagination. And as you said, going on a pirate ship, you're imagining what the pirates will look like if they've got one leg, if they've got a parrot stuck onto their shoulder and how they're talking. No, I, I think it's very powerful problem solving skills, turn taking, social role playing. Yeah. And I now, having learned those skills through research, apply them into my own parenting. Now that I have that kind of deep understanding about it, just have this new level of excitement. I have a three and a half and a one and a half year old and my three and a half year old was on the phone to the thermometer the other day talking to one of his kindy teachers and I just oh. remember thinking about Oh, his pretend play skills. I just remember thinking it's so beautiful to see. And perhaps if I hadn't understood the true beauty of what he was doing, perhaps I would have rushed him along a bit more. He was kind of dilly-dallying in the morning and I was trying to get him out of the house. But I just spent this moment to think, you know, what a beautiful stage of his development. And it's allowed me to really reflect on his trajectory of play development as well. And it's just been really beautiful. Oh, that's lovely. And I I think that's good that you do that. Instead of rushing him out of the house, you might just give him that moment to do that. Because I think a lot of parents are in such a hurry these days Mm. to do so many things that they don't actually see what the child is actually doing. And I know parents have got to rush out and get the kids to school Mm. and do all that kind of thing. But if you're a few minutes late, just because a Mm. child is expressing their feelings or expressing it through play, just... Give them a few minutes. You don't have to be in such a rush. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that, actually, because I think one of the greatest sadnesses, I think, of of a lot of young parents at the moment is the idea of busyness. Mm, mm. And, you know, busyness almost being a marker of success. Um, And I, I did it myself when I had my firstborn. He was a newborn. I felt like I had to be at an activity every day. We'd have the library on a Monday. We'd have swimming on a Tuesday. We'd have something else on a Wednesday. There was this idea that we just had to be doing something all of the time. And really, when I look back, I think, what was I avoiding doing? And I think largely I was avoiding actually just slowing down and stopping and just being present with this young baby in the moment. And I think there's always this idea of, doing more and and buying more and doing more activities and I know that parenting your children is stressful 
But I really, truly believe that when you drown out the noise, strip it right back and parent for a relationship, like everything else changes. Yeah, I agree. And I think also allowing that child to have that time as well. And if you allow them to be present and and mm. if you're present with them, it actually calms the whole energy mm. down because you've got time to communicate with your child. You've got time to watch their facial expressions and yeah. why do baby massage and you can also do play with that you know just encourage your child to have that time for that space and if they don't want to have it that's fine you don't have to have all these expensive toys I do like the wooden toys I must admit so I yeah. think some of the wooden toys are amazing yeah. but you don't have to have all of that yeah just have something simple like a blanket or a little tent and just put a few yeah. teddy bears in it and your child, yeah. they'll make up their own yeah. ideas and even just give them a bit of paint and a bit of water. Yeah. That, and, and they can learn the mixing. They can learn about colour. And with water play, they learn all about the measuring and yeah. cause and effect, Absolutely. as you said. And I think yeah. parents don't give the children time mm. to do that. And I think it's so, so valuable. Mm. Yeah. And, um, you know, one of the most incredible play items I think that every playroom should have is a cardboard box yes you know a cardboard box is a pirate ship and then it's a boat and then it's and then it's a car yeah I actually have a, a set of these ironically enough flat pack boxes they did come from Ikea but they're like flat pack cardboard boxes and I use them in my therapy sessions with kids I've recently been delivering this learn to play program to a few young children who are quite underdeveloped in their pretend play skills and I think have had a range of experiences but a lot of them actually just lacking in social play experience and Mm -hmm. I think one child in particular has obviously got some quite high academic standards at home and so with a lack of understanding around play, I don't think there's a great deal of joy and freedom to mm. play independently because I think it's highly regarded enough in terms of the, the family values. So this cardboard box initially was just around him actually having fun, right? So we'd just stack it really, really high and then we'd charge at it and knock it over. And I guess to the outside eye, people would be wondering what the heck we were doing. But there was a lot of purpose behind it in terms of trying to build that therapeutic relationship, helping him to understand that it was okay to actually break my creation and for him to just actually be having fun. And since we're nearly at week eight, he's now using these cardboard boxes to make roads tunnels we've had a car wash we've had sailing boats we've had submarines we've had school buses we've had a cage for the zoo and then last week we opened it up and it was a pizza oven (gasps) you know like this same wow that's amazing same box and the development in his play from Mm some support in terms of extending his play skills but really just him actually experiencing and enjoying play has been incredible to watch. Wow. And how old is he? He's four and a half. Wow. I yeah. do some childcare and, and I did that with a kid. I just gave him a box mm. and I just let him get on with it. I, I enjoyed it. I, I played with him, but I really yeah. let him lead. And like yeah. you, he just jumped in it. And all he wanted to do was to sit in it. And he said, oh, can I have a teddy yeah. bear? He yeah. just did all those things and he wanted to tip, tip the whole box out with all the toys in it. That was great. And he had a great yeah. time. And I think it is so, so important. I'm glad you also brought up the fact that it's the expectations of some parents that they expect their child at a young age to be able to read and write. They want them to be able to get ready for school. But that's putting too much pressure Mm. on kids at a young age to do something that they're not actually quite ready to do. Yeah. And they're worried that a four-year-old can't write their name. Well, What's yeah. wrong with that? They can't write it by the time they're seven or eight. Okay, there might be a mm. an issue, but it's that they'll, expectation. They'll probably yeah. never use a pen and paper anyway. A lot of the schools are going paper free now, which is a separate problem in its own right, I think. And the social emotional readiness of kids is what I find the most important. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And also 
the skills that will really set them apart from their peers when they get to school. For the kids that really struggle on a social emotional level, I think that would present them with more of an initial struggle for that transition than those that can't write their name or can't recite the alphabet, for example. Yeah. I think in a classroom environment, those kind of academic skills will be learnt. But if a child isn't able to turn take or doesn't understand the thoughts and feelings of somebody else or isn't able to process feelings, doesn't have a toolbox of emotion processing strategies, I think that's where they're going to notice those biggest differences. Mm. Yeah, I agree with you. We've experienced play before. I've done it in my childcare career and you've done it in what you do. So Mm. how can we bring this back to support mums, to give them the tips and give them the basic toolbox of what they can do to help their child to learn to play. So I think first and foremost, it comes down to, I'm very much influenced by attachment theory, but comes back to being that secure base in which you can attune with your child and put them down. I can't tell you how many parents I've told that it's okay to just put their baby on the floor and go and have a shower, providing them with that safe environment that they can explore. So creating what I call a yes environment. So making sure that if they're gravitating towards pot plants, for example, making sure those pot plants are off the ground. So they're not eating the dirt, wherever you find yourself saying, no, 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 don't go over there. No, 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 don't go over there. No, 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 come back. Wherever you find yourself redirecting them all of the time that's the place where you need to actually just reassess that environment make sure that environment is as clear as possible and giving them the freedom to actually explore and being in attunement with them for a start that's the very basis of children developing those independent play skills second is the idea that you don't need to be in the middle of that play to be connected with them through play, if that makes sense. So I don't need to be the kiddie teacher in my son's pretend play, for example. I don't need to do the stacking of the blocks for an infant, for example. Sometimes I get a a box of blocks out and my intention is that the baby's going to try and stack them. Whereas actually they might might just want to bang them together. So taking away my idea of what play looks like and actually just being led by them. And simplifying it you can be playing with your baby doing row 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 your boat and change out some of the words for the baby's name so and so is such a delight as you kind of rowing your boat or you know one of my favorite things to do is to you won't be able to see me but to like point out body parts and and assign them to a noise so the nose is different noises and you'll start to find over time that your baby then starts to pop your nose and say beep beep or starts to pull on their ears and make the same noise it's just these little ways of just being in a relationship with your baby that isn't complicated so it's really just stripping it back to this notion of just of being together and simplifying the idea of not needing to do so much yeah and you you can do that with baby massage you can just do it by talking to them just lying them on the floor go and have a shower and then come back and doing what you're doing or even just touching their their shoulder you use your imagination you're encouraging your child at an early age to use their imagination yeah absolutely and even just narrating what you're doing really young infants will learn so much from just watching you being in the kitchen watching you potter around I think people kind of forget that everything a young child experiences experiences that for the very first First time time. Mm. and you know they're like sponges they take everything in they're very keen to learn they want to they want to learn yeah the development of their brain is experience dependent so Mm. they're wired for experience Mm. when you realize oh that baby's just seen the grass blowing the wind for the very first time Mm. like Mm. whoa that is so exciting to them yes Um, and you never have the opportunity to just lay on the grass oh I love doing that I think that's so Mm. important feeling that texture seeing that color watching it move seeing how you can pull it out of the ground but if you grab a handful too big it's too heavy to pull out of the ground yeah wow that's so incredible and so simple 
Yes, to exactly. Feet. And even putting the little feet on the ground, feeling it on their feet, that your, your feet are very sensitive. Mm. So I think parents are slowly beginning to come back to that because in childcare these days, that's what plays all about becoming, being and belonging. It's all about incorporating play for them, as we're, as we're saying. I think that's what the childcare centres are trying to to get back to doing but I came out of it because of all the programming that you had to do on top of that you didn't have the chance to actually sit down with the child and you need that time instead of writing notes all the time about what they're doing mm. just being with them in, in, in a present yeah absolutely yeah. we're seeing it a bit out and about as so we know there's lots of nature play play areas Mm-mm. being sort of redeveloped and you know a lot of the old sort of rubbishy, plasticky playgrounds are getting moved on a bit and we're going back to nature a bit in that sense. Yeah, nature is your own playground. I mean, tree and being, okay, you don't want your kid to fall out of the tree, but being there to support them if they do fall out of the tree and mm-hmm. saying, you know, it's, an, you know, it's okay. But that's just stuff that I think parents get a little bit overwhelmed by it all. Overwhelmed's not the right word, but... I think they caretake their kids a bit too much. That's what yeah. I'm trying to say. And I th- yeah. Real difference between risk-taking and yes. dangerous. And I think discerning the difference between taking a risk and actually being dangerous is really quite important. And mm. you know, take, for example, my son at the minute is really into riding his bike down hills at the skate park. And yesterday he stood at the top of the biggest hill and he oh, yeah. shouts to me, Mum, I'm feeling really brave. And part of me was dying inside. I was like, oh, that hill is so big. And then the other part of me was I actually really want him to be able to understand bodily awareness, to understand the sensations of feeling mm. brave, to understand his balance, to get an understanding of his body in space. There were so many things that he was about to learn. Yes. And I was like, well, do you know, if you're feeling brave, I just said, you listen to your body and go when you're ready. And he was delighted with himself going down the hill. And I think, yeah, I could have said to him, get down from there. That's far too high. But I wouldn't have actually taught him anything no. in that process. Yes. You- so, yeah, he could have fallen off his bike and skinned his elbows but he would have also learned his tipping point at what point he loses his balance and he gets an opportunity to try and correct his balance and so so I think that difference between taking a risk of something actually being dangerous I could talk to you about this forever because I really enjoy the basis of play I think it's so valuable how can my listeners find out more about you and your offerings Yes, I have a website, www.securefoundations.com.au. I'm also on Instagram at Secure Foundations. That's probably where I'm most active. And I have online coaching program. I do one-on-one parent coaching as well. And I have some e-books and e-resources and things like that that are available for download on the website. Do you have any final tips you can give to a first-time mum? Really and truly unfollow any social media accounts that make you feel any kind of shame fear judgment and tune in to yourself and what is important to you and really just focus on that relationship like young children are born to be attached and that doesn't mean that you need to be constantly attached to them. But really just, yeah, slow down and really just see them as a small human being. You know, when I think you come up against resistance from young children, it's usually because we've forgotten that they're a small human, that they have feelings, that they have these nuances, that they think about things, that they want things and need things. And when you step back and imagine, the way that you speak to them. Imagine you were speaking to another adult who can think and feel the same Mm. and talk to your child like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sarah, for being a guest on First Time Mums Chat and sharing so many wonderful insights with my listeners. I'm sure they will take away some great tips on helping the children get more from therapeutic play. Yeah, thank you for having me. I hope you find the ideas and concepts that Sarah and I shared in this podcast helpful and that they encourage you to expand your mindset around play for your child. 
You don't need to furnish your child with fancy, expensive items for them to enjoy play. Just let their imagination run wild. I highly recommend checking out Sarah's website and her Instagram page where you'll find out more about her and her services and offerings. I've included a link to them in the show notes at mybabymassage.net forward slash podcast forward slash zero four nine. Please help me spread the word to other mums by rating and reviewing my podcast on Apple Podcasts. This helps me support more mums just like you for a smooth journey into the exciting world of parenthood. I am really passionate about First Time Mums Chat and providing a weekly resource that helps parents who are new to the whole world of parenting and I want to hear from you. I warmly welcome questions and feedback and comments on my podcast episodes. I am always on the lookout to interview mums who are doing amazing things. Is your little one suffering from colic or constipation? I may have just the thing to help you experience less crying, less stress and have a happier, more contented little one and household. Just go to mybabymassage.net forward slash colic to get your free colic remedies cheat sheet. Start soothing your baby and get some much needed rest and build a deeper bond with your baby that grows stronger every day. Day. That's mybabymassage.net forward slash colic. So please reach out by sending me an email at support at mybabymassage.net. And once again, thank you so much for listening.